And we welcome you to Montana Basketball Media Day, talking Grizz and Lady Grizz basketball. Just a couple weeks away before the season will begin for both of these teams. Up here with head coach Travis Takir, senior Fabian Krislovic for the men, and head coach Shannon Schwain and junior Sierra Anderson for the Lady Grizz. First off, Coach Takir, we'll start with you. Uh, just kind of give us a preview of your team as you guys now are getting ready for the season to start. No question. Um, you know, it's been kind of a long preseason for us um, as we had a summer tour and we gave the guys some time off, and I think for now, right now, we, we're doing a pretty good job of executing, um, playing together, chemistry strong. Uh, I think our conditioning is where we're behind right now, but that's the time that we gave them off uh, in September that we need to make up for. But things are going well, and we're excited. And how about for you, Shannon, the unthinkable has happened yet again with uh, two of your seniors going down with the same types of knee injuries. Just tough to, <laughs> tough to fathom, really, but how are you guys looking right now and, of course, having to try and turn the page? Yeah, we're in uh, familiar territory, unfortunately. Uh, same group we ha have back, and I am encouraged by what they did at the end of the season last year. So we're really working on trying to reinvent ourselves again and pick up from where we left off and move forward. Uh, they were doing a great job at the end of the year playing with everybody, and I'm encouraged by how much growth we had. And so we've got the addition of Caitlin Lonergan after Christmas joining our team, which will be a big boost. And uh, just excited about where these young kids can take us. And Sierra, I'll go with you next. Uh, you talk about, again, your senior leaders going down. What was it like for you guys at practice or, or w when you guys heard of the news? And, and how do you try, you as a leader yourself, to turn the page? Yeah, it was definitely really heartbreaking for the entire team. Uh, I know the day that Kaylee went down, the gym was silent and it was just it was one of those moments your heart drops a little bit um, and then when Alicia told us we all understood but again it's it's really tough when you have such great leaders and such great um, basketball players out there and um, it's understandable for Alicia and Kaylee it's so tragic but what I'm really looking forward to is just moving forward as a team what we have and I think we have a lot of growth from last year and I think we can really capitalize on it and hopefully surprise a couple people. Both the Grizz and Lady Grizz picked third in the preseason poll. That was, of course, before the injuries, of course. But, Fab, let's go to you next. Uh, the trip to Costa Rica, what was that like, and what were your biggest takeaways as you guys grew together as a team? Uh, it was just, uh, first of all, a really great bonding experience because we got a lot of turnover this year, a lot of new guys coming in. So to be able to straight away uh, go travel together and experience new things and to get a different perspective on things together because we were – some of the things we did over there, there uh, helping in the orphanage for one, it just really uh, set the tone for the whole trip. And I think it was just a great opportunity for the team to grow together. And coach, for you, the, the newcomers this year, the roster is a little bit different than, than last March when you walked off the floor in Reno. Just to kind of give us a general preview of these guys coming in and, and to go one by one is almost impossible of what you expect, but, but just how your roster is different now. Yeah, things change pretty quickly in practice. Uh, we'll, we'll get a group of six or seven experienced guys together and then start subbing and, and things change quickly. But, uh, you know, I, I think the advantage with so many new faces for us is the versatility. We had an, an, an opportunity to kind of plug some holes, some areas where we weren't very strong last year. We increased shooting. Uh, Nico Bevins coming in at 54% from three is a threat away from the rim, which we need for spacing for guys like Mike and Ahmad to get to the rim, Fab to be able to do what he does. Uh, Jamara Coe is, is a newcomer in the paint with two years of Division One playing experience, obviously is huge. I think he's increased uh, a lot of things for us in terms of our leadership, but our physical play around the basket. Um, I think it allows Fab to play a little more natural uh, where he was playing when he was alongside Martin uh, as a facilitator and a low post threat. Uh, so I just think our balance has gotten a lot better. Coach, for you, when, when you look at how you guys improved through the end of last year, you guys had a great homestand here, we're playing well going into Reno. What were some of the biggest things that you saw as improvement as you guys went through the year? Well, obviously defensively with a, a group that young and inexperienced, we had a lot of room to grow there. Um, and then just learning shot selection and uh, for a lot of those kids, just offense in general, what we were wanting out of them, what we were wanting them to do, how we wanted our guards to try to create shots for who, things like that. And, um, you know, I think we are going to have all those kids back and we've had some injuries, just some little things going on in practice and, and finally starting to get them all out there together, which is fun to finally have a chance to see what we're going to be going with. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm really excited about how hard they're working and, and they're really getting after it every day. And we've got just two new kids this year, so that seems like a piece of cake. 
but uh, they're coming along as well. Sophia Styles from Alta has just shown a ton of promise in practice and is one heck of a little defender and doing some nice things on offense. And then Abby Anderson from Oregon has, has been giving us some bright moments as well. Sierra, one of your staples is defense, uh, being one of the defensive MVPs last year. How are you guys going to try and focus on that again this year to, to really carry you at least maybe through the non-conference with the losses that you have? Definitely. I think what we're really going to have to focus on is being tenacious and really aggressive. Again, we gave up a lot of size with Kay Kaylee and Alicia, and I think we're, when we're going to beat teams is when we're going to out-hustle and outplay them. I think that all comes on defense. Uh, we've been doing way better, I think, this year on defense after having a little more experience and we get the positioning a little more as a team. Um, I'm really looking forward to what I think we can do if we put all those pieces together. Fab, you're the only senior on this year's squad. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that that means he gets rain on everything, right, Coach? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to that, Fab, uh, what's the mindset for you coming into this year? Has it really dawned on you yet that, again, you're the only senior on this squad? Uh, I, it kind of did dawn on me, uh, I think, straight away after the season last year. Just uh, The biggest thing was uh, learning, adapting to the absence of guys that have been here since I was a freshman and learning the ropes. Like, I think Myra, Jack, and Brandon were guys that, as soon as I walked in the gym here, they were held me and showed me the right way to do things and how to be do things a Grizz way. And so uh, I've kind of adjusted to that and gotten to learn from that and uh, learn from them. And so I think but the upper upperclassmen we have have to step up and uh, be a leadership group together. And I don't think it's just on my shoulders as the, as the lone senior to do that. We have a bunch of experienced guys and guys that know how to do things the right way. So it's uh, going to be a committee thing. Coach, what did you learn most maybe about yourself last year that with up and downs at times or great streaks throughout the season, frustrating times, but also from a leadership standpoint, what are you expecting this year from guys like Fab? Um, for me, I learned patience. You know, um, you, you've got to do what's best for a program. Your program has to continue to grow. And, and we all want instant gratification in everything we do, but sometimes you got to look, you know, down the road a little bit and, and – take advantage of all opportunities to to grow through adversity and I think we did that as a program and hopefully we'll see the fruits of that this year I'm, I'm excited about the group we have I think that um, like I say the versatility and the balance is, is deep um, but the personality of the group I think that these guys the chemistry the bond is strong right now and that, that's what you enjoy the most is putting a product on the floor that you enjoy going to war with Coach, you look at your roster, and again, you have five returning starters. It doesn't seem like that, of course, by losing Kaylee and Alicia. But with that being said, what can you build on maybe initially November and December in this brutal non-conference schedule that you guys have to maybe be more prepared for that kind of rigors of the schedule? Um, well, I think we're going to be tested, of course, right away with Kentucky and Gonzaga and Wyoming was a very experienced and, and very talented team with almost everybody back as well. So we're going to have some tough ones right off the bat. I think what's going to be important with this group is that we don't get down on ourselves and uh, we look at each, each game as an experience and an opportunity to get better and take something positive away from that. Uh, we're quite aware of the opponents we have. I think Marquette also was picked to win their league. Um, we're going to see them in Cancun. So it's, it's going to be really difficult at the beginning, but I think they're excited about the challenge. Uh, consistently in practice, we're reminding them about, uh, you know, hey, Kentucky's not going to give you that. You better be working a little bit harder than that. So it's, it's definitely some motivation for them. But I think this group knows they've got uh, to buy into being better defensively to have a chance to, to do anything. And with us having some smaller lineups, we're going to probably have to look at doing some different things of p keeping people off guard a little bit and changing up a little bit on D and, and maybe get doing some things that are a little bit uncharacteristic of what we've done in the past just because uh, we're definitely going to have some lineups where we're not real big. We'll talk schedules now with everybody, but Sierra, for you, when you look at a schedule and you see Kentucky, Gonzaga, Marquette on there, what does that mean for you as a player? Do you get more excited to get ready for a game like in November? Or when you see a schedule like that, what comes to your mind? I think we're all really excited. I know I personally am excited to, again, upset some people, to cause some havoc. Um, they're going to be tough games, and I think it's going to be really important for us to come together and build together and we're going to go through bumps in the road I mean, again a tough schedule uh, but I think it's it could be a really great point for us to capitalize and build before we get to conference and to come off some couple a couple really good wins would be awesome. Kentucky and Gonzaga will be here at Dahlberg Arena Thursday November 16th Saturday November 18th 
fab for you. It's another tough schedule for the Grizz, back-to-back yep. -back years. What stood out maybe last year? Was there one game, maybe a venue that the guys played at or maybe a specific game that you had that stood out when you played on the bigger stage? Um, I think uh, Oregon for us was a, was a game that was, you know, they had a Final Four run and they were just a great team. And I think we showed at times we could, we could play with them and uh, in that arena, which was just such a great environment. And uh, so I think we learned a lot from that and saw things that we could do, but we also showed us that, like, we can do this, but it doesn't mean anything if we can't do it for 40 minutes. And so I think that's, that's one game that sticks out looking back on last year. Yeah. Gr Grizz had a 15-0 run, I believe, in that game. We were up going close to halftime, at least. Coach DeCure, we'll ask you about your scheduling tactics. You, you didn't take it easy on your guys again. Five Power Five teams you will play, including a, an opening road trip at Penn State and at Pitt. But how did this schedule come to be? And again, just kind of refresh us on your strategy when you put the schedule together. Um, there, there's a couple different philosophies. Um, you know, I, I think that Scheduling wins is, is usually the most common philosophy for a lot of people, BCS level or at our level. Uh, you're fighting for your life a little bit um, to try to keep your job sometimes with wins. For us, um, we're looking more at recruiting, um, the level of players, the places that we go. We think our schedule is important in terms of where we take kids, uh, an opportunity to take them home, an opportunity to play against the best competition possible. Uh, and then the other piece is if we want to be consistent in March, if in February, March, I think that we have to establish ourselves as a team that can play at a high level. And we flirted with some wins, you know, Gonzaga, Oregon, USC, NC State, Ole Miss are all teams that we've played really close and in about the last four minutes we kind of fell short. Some of that was lack of depth, some of that was lack of size, some of that was lack of athleticism. When you add guys like Carl Nicholas and Timmy Falls to the bunch, we get quicker, we get more athletic, we have more ability to play above the rim, and we feel that maybe this is the year we could pick one of those off. We'll talk around the big sky now with all of you, and Shannon, you first. Uh, you guys were picked third, of course. That was before the voting happened. What's your take on the rest of the big sky? Very competitive. It seems one through eight, maybe even down from there, but what's your take on the rest of the league? Well, obviously, Northern Colorado, I think, was most people's pick for, uh, you know, the champion for the preseason, they return everybody back and they were a, a tough team. They're always good defensively. They shoot the ball well. Um, they had multiple weapons from three. Uh, so, you know, I think they're going to be awfully tough. They're, they're just experienced kids. A lot of those girls have been playing together for quite some time. North Dakota is on the flip side of that. They're always really big and, and uh, you know, present a whole different uh, you know, group of problems for people with their size. And Travis always has them ready to go, and it's always a tough environment there and a fun environment. We enjoy playing there because there's lots of people at North Dakota. Um, so, but it's been interesting in the past. You know, Idaho State snuck into the championship game, and uh, they've come from the seven seed and the, you know, further on down. So they, they've always been tough at the tournament, and I think that, you know, there's lots of teams with some very good players. NAU returns a lot of people back this year, and I think they could surprise some people. Um, Bozeman's got some very capable scores in their guards, and and uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see. It's just been every year, you know, you know what you're going to get with SAC, and they're tough, and um, every team has a chance to be in the mix, I believe, and um, that's what's made it kind of exciting every year in the conference. Just like what Coach said, Sierra, it seems every game is different from the style of play that you guys have to go against. Is there one or two particular teams that you like going up against or that you remember that, that really stick out, whether it's a certain road venue or the way that a team plays? I think North Dakota is always one that comes to mind. It's, it's a tough trip for us every year and for some reason we've never we haven't been able to get them in a while so I think that's a game I'm looking forward to just for maybe a personal I want to beat North Dakota. Um, Eastern, Montana State, those are always really fun games, rivals um, but like Coach said everyone in our league is good and we're we have to be prepared to play everyone and I think every game is going to be a, a competition so it'll be exciting. Senior year for you Fab is there one conference opponent that you would like to to maybe either get revenge on or or want to prove something against your final time around or or maybe what, what conference foe stands out to you in your three years here so far? Um, well over the past three years it probably has to be a uh, Weaver State every time we go there it's a tough environment and uh, getting a win there last year for the first, for the first time in a long time was a was a really big thing for us, and that was, uh, yeah, that was really <coughs> something I look back and something that was really a highlight of the three years. But the, the coming up this year, uh, it's got to be Montana State. 
end of the season, they left a sour taste in our mouth. That was the first loss I've had against them, and I really don't want to have any more against at Bozeman. I think Grizz Nation would agree with you there. Coach DeCure, uh, your take on the rest of the Big Sky. Very competitive Idaho pick to win the league, the team that ended the Grizzly season, but what's your take on the rest of the Big Sky? Um, I, I think what makes our conference so tough is you, you, every year there's three, four guys that average over 20 a game that, that can explode on any night. and. He mentions Weber and Tyler Hall just had an incredible game that night. I think he missed four shots out of the 17 he took. Uh, and it's just hard to beat teams when guys catch fire like that. Uh, Idaho returning six experienced starters, uh, seven of their, of, of their top ten guys from last year. The most experienced team um, will, will make them special as well. But I, I think the biggest thing in conference for us the last three years has been beating the bottom half. And the teams that have the best records against the bottom half of the conference are the ones that have won the league because we pretty much split a lot of games. Uh, you know, we split with Idaho. We split with Weber. Uh, we played North Dakota once last year, and we ended up with a five seed, and, and we won that game. So it's, it's taking care of business with the bottom half of the conference, and all of those teams have good players. So uh, for us, it, it's, it's be a more mature group this year than we have been in the past and take care of business when opportunity presents itself. Coach, what did you think of the fan support last year? Of course, we're there with you guys through the struggles, ups and downs, and we're still with you there at the very end of the season. What can you say about your loyal fan base? Oh, it was it was an incredible year in a lot of ways, and I think that the, the fans identified with the growth of this team last year, and it was so encouraging and um, just fun that at the end of the year when we were actually playing our best basketball, they were right there with us, and I know our girls appreciated the way they hung in there, and and struggled through it with us. So hopefully this will be a better season. We'll give them lots more highlights to be cheering about, but uh, Grizz Nation's just hard to beat. Sierra, you are one of the few. You have already have your under undergraduate degree and you're just a redshirt junior. Talk about the balance of being a student and an athlete and how you've been able to excel at it. Yeah, it's definitely tough um, finding that right balance of when you're gonna sleep and eat and practice and lift and shoot extra while doing your homework. Um, but I think it's really awesome that we're, we have such a good support system within the athletic department to have those things happen. We have great advisors, and I think that's what has helped me to plan ahead and be able to get this really great opportunity to get a, two master's degrees in my time here. So it's been really awesome. Pretty cool stuff. All right, we're going to go into a crosstalk segment right now, and where you guys are going to ask each other questions. I don't know what's coming here, but Fab, you can ask Coach Schwain a question first. Uh, coach, uh, what, at what point in your playing career did you know you wanted to be a coach? I think it was when I came back from my short stint in Spain. I was allowed a chance to be on staff with Robin and Annette, and uh, that gave me my first taste of coaching and I really enjoyed it and luckily for me they created a position because at the time we only had one assistant and uh, then it just kind of went from there and uh, had to wait a long time to get my shot to stay here <laughs> at Montana but uh, it was worth the wait and of course Rob was an amazing mentor and uh, learned a lot in all my years under him. Awesome. All right Trav you're up next. Sierra if you were a coach what time would you practice? <laughs> uh, I would prefer to have practice around 3. Um, right now we go about 6.45, which is nicer than my freshman year, which we started, I, I swear, sometimes at 5.45 in the morning. And so I was here at 4.45. Um, so I would prefer a 3 o'clock schedule, you know, get done with class, come to practice, nice and warm, awake, had lunch. That'd be my preference. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, Shannon, you're up next. All right, Fab, who would you pick on your team to make the half-court shot when needed? Um, this might sound a bit unexpected, but I think uh, Trevor Spoyer. You know, I've always, uh, I'm with him in the gym a lot, and sometimes we just m mess around and shoot from all types of strange places. And, yeah, we always do, like, half-court challenge shots and that. And he always is the first one to make it. Whoever I'm with, we have a group of three or four of us. We'll just go, okay, we'll go five spots, half-court sideline, whatever, and he always makes the half-court shot, so I think I'm going to go with Spoiler on that one. All right. All right, Sierra, you're up next. Coach, what was the best advice you were ever given as a basketball coach? Mike Montgomery told me not to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, in my early years with, with Blaine Taylor at Old Dominion, um, being a high school junior college coach, you kind of want to just get through all your drills, and he, he always talked about slowing down and teaching. And there's no shortcuts in teaching. Uh, and the most fundamental teams tend to win. 
Uh, and, and so I've always remembered that and, and tried to make sure that we took the time to teach guys to do things the right way. All right. Grid.